warm welcome to the Sitam family service today. We always look forward to a special time in worship and in the Word of God. My name is George Gishuro, serving as your moderator today. Our church, Sitam, is on a 40-day campaign to encourage evangelism at a personal level, and we will be looking at one way to do so during our service today. We welcome all of you listening to this service on Hope FM and those of you watching us on Hope TV and on all our Sitam Church online channels. Every Sunday at this time, our hashtag today is Evangelize Anyway. More about that later in the service. As always, let's get started with praise and worship Please help me in welcoming our amazing CBS worship team to lead us into the presence of God. Amen. Amen, amen. amen. Welcome to the house of the Lord. What a friend indeed we have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus All our sins and griefs to bear What a privilege to carry Everything to God in prayer Amen. You may dance with us.
sana kukusifu baba Leo. Akili yangu imeamua mimi ni wako baba Leo. Moyo wangu tainu kana kukusifu baba Leo. Akili yangu imeamua mimi ni wako Mwili wangu eh. Mwili wangu ni wako Mikile zangu ni zako Mwenyezi mungu Mwenyezi mungu Mwili wangu Mwili wangu, Mwili wangu ni wako Mikile zangu ni zako Mwenyezi Mungu Mwenyezi Mungu Mwenyezi Mungu yeah. Moyo wangu tainuka na kusifu baba Leo. Akili yangu imeamua mimi ni wako baba Leo. Moyo wangu tainuka na kukusifu baba Leo. Akili yangu imeamua mimi ni wako mwili wangu eh wangu ni wako za wangu Mwenyezi Mungu Mwenyezi Mungu has done for you let us see when this is the god who cares show somebody eh, he is a guy who loves let them see he is a god who loves everybody see come on everybody see everybody see let everybody come on everybody see everybody come on everybody see let everybody, Let everybody, one more time, everybody, see, come on, everybody, see, everybody. See, come on, everybody, see, yeah. let everybody, everybody, yeah. Yeah. Boy, good, tainu, kana kuku, sifu, baba, yeah. akili yangu imeamu, ami mingi wako, baba, yeah. Boy, Father, to say that you are holy, to say that you are able, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Holy, holy God Almighty, it's a privilege to worship you. Oh, 
with a grateful heart I lift my hands to you Proclaiming God you reign oh, With a grateful heart I lift my hands to you Proclaiming God you reign
heaven we thank you we worship you we glorify your holy name indeed mighty father you are great great are you o lord you are worthy of our praise you are worthy of our worship Lord God, we are here this day, mighty Father, expecting to hear from you. We are here this day, mighty Father, knowing that had it not been for you, we would have been destroyed. Had it not been for you, we would not be here this day. But for your glory and your honor, we are here. Receive all the glory, receive all the honor. We exalt and magnify your holy name. We thank you and we worship you. Indeed, it is such an honor. It is such a privilege to be worshiping you this day. It is just an honor to be praising you this day. We thank you and we worship you. May you, Father, receive our praise, receive our worship, receive, mighty Father, everything that we are here to offer today. Lord, because we are here expecting from you. Jehovah Master, there is none like you. There is none to be worshipped other than you. You are the King of Kings. You are the Lord of Lords. And there is none who can stand against you. There is none who can compare to you. We thank you and we worship you. We thank you, mighty Father, for everyone who is tuned in today. Mighty Father, they are here expecting from you. They are here, mighty Father, expecting to be consoled. They are here, mighty Father, because they know that it is in you that they will find joy. It is in you that they will find comfort. It is in you, mighty Father, that they will be able to find that which they have been trusting and believing in you for. Lord, because you are a good and a faithful Father, we know that you are doing it in their lives. For them that came here sick, mighty Father, you are Jehovah Rapha, and we know that you are going, mighty Father, to stretch your healing arm upon them, and you are going to heal them in Jesus' mighty name. We know because you are Jehovah Jireh, everyone expecting to be provided for this morning. Father, you will do it for them in Jesus' mighty name. You are a good God, mighty Father. We thank you for the gift of life that you have given us, Father. We do not take it for granted. Lord, receive the glory and the honor today. We thank you and we worship you. We pray for our nation, Kenya, mighty Father, for such a time as this, mighty Father, as we are preparing for the next election, Jehovah, that may your unity prevail in our nation. Mighty Father, from County 001 to County 047, we are proclaiming peace, mighty Father, that mighty Father comes from above. We thank you because you are going to bind us, mighty Father, with cords that will not be broken, with cords that will not be broken by our tribes. They will not be broken by our political affiliation. They will not be broken by anything, mighty Father. But we will be there, mighty Father, as our brothers and our sisters keep up. We will be there, mighty Father, to pray for our leaders as well. And that is what we are doing now praying for the leadership of this nation from the presidency, mighty Father, at the highest office, mighty Father, to the county level, mighty King. We remember those at the grassroots level, Jehovah. May you continue to remember them. We pray for knowledge upon their lives. We pray for wisdom as they are governing your people. May they seek your wise counsel, Jehovah Master, for them to be able to govern appropriately, Jehovah. We are thanking you. We are exalting your holy name. We pray for the well-being of our economy. We pray for the prosperity of our nation because when the nation prospers, we also, mighty Father, will prosper. We thank you and we worship you. May you resuscitate every sector of our economy. May you remember every sector, mighty Father, that holds the economy of our nation. Lord, we are putting our trust in you. Mighty Father, we are believing in you. Lord, may you come and reign. We only, mighty Father, want to hoist the flag of Jesus in this nation of Kenya. And we are proclaiming that Kenya belongs to you, Jesus. And mighty Father, we uplift your name in this nation of Kenya. And we say, mighty Father, every other God, mighty Father, is scattered in Jesus' mighty name. May you continue to hold us together as a people. May you continue, mighty Father, to help us to prosper as a people because our trust is in you. Lord, as we come this day, mighty Father, trusting and believing in you, Father, may you come and quench us. May you come, mighty Father, and feed us, Lord God, even as we sit, mighty Father, to hear your word. We trust you and we believe in you. For it is in the name of Jesus Christ we pray and we give thanks. Everyone said.
Amen and amen, amen. What a great time in worship this morning. Many thanks to our anointed worship team. Let us appreciate them as they are sitting. Let us appreciate them. That was an awesome, awesome moment in the presence of the Most High God. And if this is your first time with us on CBS, we would like to say welcome and please feel right at home. We especially want to welcome our friends who are joining the broadcast in Namibia, in America, in Romania, and also in East Timor. We are mentioning these countries specifically because we have a growing ministry presence in those countries. But of course, you are always very welcome wherever you are in the world. We are delighted to have you with us today. Now, if you haven't done so, please, why don't you subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the bell icon for notification and reminders for future videos. Please, why don't you also go ahead, share today's worship experience with someone else, invite your friends near or far to be blessed today. And remember, use the hashtag as you are tweeting today. Remember, our hashtag for the day is evangelize anyway. Why not engage with us by posting on Twitter, on Instagram. Let us know your thoughts and comments as we worship with us today. We are also welcoming our speaker today. That is Reverend Ken Isige in a little while. A message on sharing the gospel in difficult times. You don't want to miss it. Now, as we continue, here is some important notices about our ministry. So please watch this clip. We are delighted to welcome you today to our CBS family service. If you are watching us on Hope TV or listening on Hope FM or those of you streaming live on our Sitem Church online social media platforms for the very first time, we extend a very warm welcome to you. Thank you for joining us as we take time to worship and hear from God. We also have a special youth service live on Hope TV and on the Sitem YT Nation social media pages every Saturday from 2 p.m. Our CBS Sunday School happens every Sunday at 8.30 a.m. for ages 10 to 12 years, at 9 a.m. for ages 5 and below, and 9.30 a.m. for children 6 to 9 years. On Tuesdays, please join us on Hope TV, Hope FM, Facebook and YouTube at 5 p.m. for the After Sunday Live discussion where any questions you have about the subject of the sermon today will be addressed. We welcome you to join us on Wednesday for the live midweek prayer service from 6 p.m. broadcast on Hope TV and Hope FM and on all the Sitem Church online social media platforms. We invite you to send in your prayer requests before and even during the service. Our pastors will be praying with you and for you. We want to thank all our Safari groups for continuing to meet faithfully online. We expect Safari group meetings to be virtual, using social media platforms like WhatsApp or meeting by Zoom until further notice. If you are not in a Safari group and you wish to join one, please send us a message on our WhatsApp numbers plus 254-784-277-277 Airtel and plus 254-728-221-221 Safaricom and we will guide you on how to join one in your area. Planning to get married? We urge all our members to contact your senior pastor for direction on the steps to be taken in preparation for your wedding. Our pastors will conduct weddings, keeping strictly with the Ministry of Health guidelines, so please contact your pastor in good time to make arrangements. We express our deepest condolences to all who are bereaved in this season. We wish to inform you that our pastors will be available to conduct funeral services strictly following the current protocols from the Ministry of Health. We will also conduct the burial service on site according to the current Ministry of Health protocols as well. Please contact your respective senior pastor for guidance. All our Sitem Church offices are open between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. Monday to Friday, strictly observing all current Ministry of Health protocols. Thank you for staying connected to the Sitem Broadcast Service and thanks for paying attention to these notices. Please remember that all our assemblies around Kenya are now open for in-person services. Kindly note that you will have to register in advance to book a seat. 
You can do so by using the USSD code STAR 483 STAR 933 HASH for both Safaricom and Airtel users. And follow the instructions to receive a seat confirm for the service you choose to attend. Alternatively, you can use the church website www.sitam.org to register. Sitting capacity is limited to not more than one-third of the capacity of the sanctuary and all other Ministry of Health protocols still apply. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of the service. How did you come to the Lord Jesus Christ? I think that's a very important question because when we have conducted statistical research on how people came to know about the Lord Jesus Christ, we have always discovered that more than 90% of all individuals came to the Lord Jesus Christ because someone else told them about the Lord Jesus Christ. And that includes myself. And so it is so important that actually people share with others about the Lord Jesus Christ. If 90% did not come because of dreams, did not come because uh, uh, they had a vision somewhere. Ninety percent came because someone else shared with them about the Lord Jesus Christ. The question that we are asking today is, uh, whatever happened to evangelism? Because evangelism seems to be an orphan within the church. And so we are encouraging our members, uh, both locally and internationally, wherever we may be, that we may return back evangelism into the conversation arena of the church. And that you as an individual may embark on sharing with others about the Lord Jesus Christ so that you'd bring them to know uh, uh, about him. You see, the Lord uses relationships friend to friend, neighbor, uses uh, siblings, he uses family members, he uses colleagues, he uses classmates. And if you do have a classmate, a friend, God uses those relationships in order to reach out to others. And so over the next uh, few weeks, uh, we are embarking uh, on a major, major campaign and exercise uh, on returning evangelism back to the conversation table. We will be having uh, gatherings in small groups. Uh, we will be uh, studying books as individuals. Uh, we will also be proclaiming this uh, in our uh, churches. Uh, we will be going ahead and even having 40 days of evangelism where we are emphasizing uh, on the aspect of uh, let us return evangelism evangelism back. Let's engage in sharing with others about the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm sure you want to be part and parcel of this. You know, the Bible records and tells us that there is great joy in heaven. Even angels rejoice in heaven when one person comes to the Lord Jesus Christ. Wouldn't you want to be part and parcel of those who do give joy to heaven? Because you are also sharing your faith with others and leading people to know about the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, do not be left behind. Be part and parcel of this great evangelism campaign as we move ahead in the next few weeks. And God bless you as you make a decision to participate in this. Thank you. And Father, we thank you for the giving of your people this day. We thank you and we worship you, mighty Father, as they provide, mighty Father, for these finances to be used, mighty Father, for the furtherance of your gospel. May you also remember them. Remember each and every one of them who has given this morning. Their tithe, their offering, mighty Father, may you bless them. May you enlarge them in a special way in Jesus' mighty name. We also pray for them who are not able to give due to one reason or the other. May you remember them, mighty Father. And as you remember others, as you are visiting others, oh, Oh Lord, do not pass them by. May you bless them as well, mighty Father. May you enlarge their territories. May you also bless the works of their hands in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. And it is now time for giving and we have the instructions on how we can be able to give. It is now time to express our worship to God through giving. Thank you for your continued support of God's work even in these trying times. As we seek to bring the spread of the virus under control, we believe that God who sees in secret will reward you openly and abundantly. 
For the easy management of our finances, we have established a common payment platform for all our giving, irrespective of which assembly you attend and even for our visitors. You can now give via mobile money through the platforms of M-Pesa or Airtel Money. The pay bill number for either system is 933-934. I repeat, 933-934. For the account name, please indicate the CITAM assembly you attend and if you have joined us in this service but you are not a member of CITAM, just write offering in the account space. Please remember that all the other CITAM people numbers remain operational. If you would like to make a direct bank deposit, electronic transfers or PESA link, please use the following account. The account name, Christ is the Answer Ministries, the bank, Cooperative Bank, a University Way branch. Account number is 011-280-617-639-00. I repeat, 011-280-617-639-00. The SWIFT code, KC-O-O-K-E-N-A. That is KC-O-O-K-E-N-A. If you prefer to give through our website, kindly visit www.sitem.org. Click on the Give tab and follow the instruction for online giving. Once again, we want to appreciate every one of you for every gift, every tithe, every offering and every generous material support. God bless you. It's time now to share in the Word of God with our preacher for the day, Reverend Ken Isige, who is the Director for Administration here at SITAM. Now, the title of the sermon today is Evangelizing in Times of Discomfort. I am convinced you will be wonderfully blessed by this message. Once again, remember to use the hashtag Evangelize Anyway. Thank you so much, George. And I just want to greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What a pleasure it is to be able to stand before you and minister the word of God today. Well, just as our moderator, Georgia, said, I'll be sharing on the topic, evangelizing in discomfort or evangelizing in times of discomfort. And I'll draw some thoughts from the instructions that Jesus gave his disciples as he prepared them for mission and for evangelism. I want to use a narrative in the life of Jesus that's recorded in the book of Matthew chapter 10. Uh, but for today's sermon, we'll only read a section of Matthew chapter 10. We want to read from verse 16 all the way to verse 23. And so if you have your Bibles with you, you could open Matthew chapter 10 from verse 16. I want to read it from the New American Standard Bible, but just feel free to follow with me in the version that you have. That's Matthew chapter 10 from verse 16 following. And verse 16 says, Behold, I'm sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. So be as wary as serpents and as innocent as doves. Be on guard against people, for they will hand you over to the courts and flog you in their synagogues. And you will even be brought before governors and kings on my account as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. But when they hand you over, do not worry about how or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given you in that hour. For it is not you who are speaking, but it is the Spirit of your Father who is speaking in you. Now brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child, and children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. And you will be hated by all because of my name. But it is the one who has endured to the end who will be saved. But whenever they persecute you in one city, flee to the next. For truly I say to you, you will not finish going through the cities of Israel until the Son of Man comes. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Let's just take a moment and just pray together. Father, we want to thank you, Lord God, even for your word. I pray, Lord Jesus Christ, that Father, all who are within earshot, Lord God, will have their hearts prepared by you, Father, to receive this word. And I ask, Lord, that it will please you to use me to minister before your people. 
We thank you and we worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now the account we've read took place sometime after Jesus had appointed the 12 apostles. The name of each of those 12 are listed in verse 2 of that same chapter. By this time, Jesus' disciples had witnessed him from the initial stages of his ministry. And so they had heard his great teachings. They had seen him performing some amazing miracles, such as calming a storm. And he calmed a storm just by the power of his words. He had healed persons who had certain debilitating conditions, conditions like leprosy and paralysis, diseases that up till that time had no known cure. But Jesus, knowing full well that he would soon be entrusting his disciples with the work of the ministry, he took some time to instruct them and to prepare them for the next level. And that is the work of carrying the gospel message to the world. Now, as he prepared them, I draw your attention to a metaphor that Jesus employed to characterize the ministry that he was just about to entrust to them. It's right there at the beginning of verse 16. He said to his disciples, Behold, I'm sending you like sheep among wolves. Sheep among wolves. As I read this verse, a number of things capture my attention. First, in some Bible versions, like the one that I'm using, he begins by drawing their attention. He tells them, Behold. I remember growing up as a young believer, as a young Christian, I was always fascinated by that word. It's not a word that we commonly use, behold. But what it does, the word draws attention such that if perhaps you might have strayed or slipped, one calling you to attention and asking you, look up or pay attention, you'd be called back to focus. And I believe he called the disciples back to focus and he uses this metaphor saying that he is sending them as sheep among wolves. A very interesting metaphor. I'd like you to notice the reverse psychology in the metaphor. Normally, it's the wolves that come into the sheep pen and ravage and devour the sheep. It's never the other way around. But Jesus reverses that. Jesus commands the sheep to leave the sheep pen and go among the wolves. As I consider the prospect of sheep leaving the sheep pens and going into wolf territory, I wondered how well they were equipped as sheep, how well they would survive as they went into wolf territory. And so I decided just to ask a mutual friend, a friend that is to both you and I. I asked Google, and I asked Google to give me the characteristics of sheep. Listen to the results I received from the sheep from the search. Sheep are timid and fearful animals. They easily panic. Google says that they are dumb, they are stupid, and they are gullible. Further says that they stampede easily and they are vulnerable to mob psychology. They have little or no means of self-defense. And more often than not, they can they can't even outrun their enemies. Continues to say that they are easily killed by predators. Wolves, on the other hand, are equipped with fangs and claws with which they easily catch and kill their prey. They are ferocious, they are aggressive predators, and they are vicious and fearless as they attack their prey. They are also slender, trim predators, at least in comparison to sheep, that is, so that they have both speed and stamina when it comes to running. They can easily outrun the sheep. They are also equipped with fangs that can be as long as your index finger. One more thing about wolves is this. They are highly intelligent predators and they operate in packs. Now think about that metaphor again as Jesus tells his disciples, I'm sending you as sheep among wolves. Not many thoughts can be more discomforting than the idea of sheep leaving the safety of their pens and going behind enemy lines, going among the wolves. 
Now, I'm not sure whether we have wolves in this country, Kenya. But growing up, I remember when we went to the village, my parents would tell us about some of the wild dogs that would roam the countryside. They used to tell us that those dogs were called T9s. I don't know whether those were real animals or whether those were some kind of mythical creatures. And there were some very disturbing stories about how they would attack people and how they would bite and ravage people. I don't know whether those stories were true or whether those anecdotes, anecdotes sorry, were just meant to keep us as children out of mischief. But when Jesus said those words, I'm sending you like sheep among wolves, he meant that his disciples, as they went into the mission fields to evangelize, it would be discomforting, it would be nerve-wracking, it would be dangerous, it would actually be analogous to sheep leaving the safety of their pens and going into areas where wolves would operate. Beloved of God, I confess to you that that's the reality of the world in which you and I live today. Now, granted the frequency and extent of the dangers that we face as we seek to evangelize, they vary from place to place, but the potential for attack and hostility is ever alive. It is, however, noteworthy and comforting to realize that Jesus, as he sent out his disciples, he didn't abandon them. Look at what Matthew chapter 10 verse 1 says. Jesus summoned the 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every disease and every sickness. In other words, Jesus equipped them with whatever they needed to operate even amongst the territory of the wolves. Jesus also told them to watch out for the wolves and he told them where the wolves were likely to be. And he identifies three categories or three areas where the attacks may come from. The first we see is in verse 17. The verse says, Be on your guard against people, for they will hand you over to the courts and flog you in their synagogues. In other words, Jesus was cautioning his disciples against attacks from the existing religious systems. And indeed, that's what you and I also face today. People who are of a different creed, of a different faith, who are dogmatic and fundamentalist in their beliefs of their faith. Sometimes when you engage in evangelizing such people, they may turn around and attack you. And sometimes they may make those attacks vicious to harm even your body. You and I have seen this in this very country. Another source of attack that Jesus cautioned his disciples about was that which may come from governments or systems of governments, the political or the legal regime under which the disciples lived. We see this from verse 18. And verse 18 says, And you will be brought before governors and kings on my account as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. And so it is possible that you might be in a legal regime or in a certain political system that is anti-Christian, anti the faith that you and I believe in. And so it becomes challenging and there's a lot of hostility as you seek to evangelize within such a context. The third source of attack that Jesus cautioned his disciples about is recorded in verse 21. And verse 21 tells us, Now brother, will betray brother to death and a father his child and children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. Persecution can even come from family. And I have heard testimonies of people who after they've given their life to Christ Jesus are abandoned and thrown out by their family members because perhaps the family is of a particular belief or creed. And when you change and switch over, they throw you out in attempt to hurt you and force you to come back. A hostile environment. Verse 22 records these words. And you will be hated by all because of my name. And I believe by so saying, Jesus was saying that everywhere around, it is possible that there would be hostility, that there would be hatred, and that there would be challenge 
as they went about seeking to evangelize, seeking to engage in the mission that he had entrusted to them, the mission of sharing the good news of the gospel. So as Jesus commissioned his disciples towards the ministry of evangelism, he empowered them for the task, he characterized the nature of the ministry that he was entrusting them to, thirdly, he cautioned them on where the dangers would lie, but he also instructed them on how to engage. How are you and I supposed to engage in the midst of the dangers that possibly lurk around and about our mission field, in the midst of the dangers that are present in the places where we work, the places where we live, our neighborhoods. Jesus, as he shared with his disciples, he told them six specific things that they are to do, six ways in which they are to respond to the dangers that would be present as he engaged them and as he sent them out on mission and evangelism. The first thing he told them is this. He told them, be wise. He told them, be wise. And this is drawn from verse 16. This is the very first thing that Jesus told his disciples to do after he characterized the challenge of the mission that he was entrusting them to. This is what verse 16 records. He tells them, behold, I'm sending you as sheep in the midst of wolves so be as wary as serpents. Be as wary as serpents. Other versions render it like this. Be as wise as serpents or be as shrewd as snakes. And so Jesus draws in another metaphor aimed at graphically depicting what he wanted his disciples to do. Now, in the scripture, the serpent is characterized as an intellectually cunning and crafty character. The first time we encounter this creature in the scripture is in the book of Genesis chapter 3, where this crafty creature deceived Eve into eating the fruit of the tree that, Jesus, that God had forbidden. And so we, like the proverbial serpent, are to be wise, but not for deceptive purposes but for good as we go about evangelizing as messengers of the good news of the gospel. In the context of evangelizing amidst hostility, such wisdom may mean saying the right thing at the right time, at the right place. It may mean being careful with your words, knowing what to say, when to say it, and how to say it. So that in the light of the possibility of attack, don't be hasty to create havoc and to ruffle feathers and just to engage in arguments for the sake. We need to be conscious of the ways and means to achieve the higher goal without compromising or, 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 or entering into untruthful things, but we need to do it in wisdom so that we don't precipitate World War III. We are to be wise. Jesus shows an example of how he was wise and how we can be wise when he was, the Pharisees at some point, were trying to trap him. And uh, at that point, the Pharisees were there together with some uh, Jewish zealots. Zealots are those who strongly believed in the Jewish system and the Jewish kingdom. But also there were the Roman uh, leaders. This was the time that uh, Jude, uh, Judah was uh, under Roman, uh, was a Roman colony. And so what happens is that they come to Jesus and they recognize the people who are there and they ask Jesus, should we give taxes to Caesar? And of course, they were asking him this question so that they could trap him. Because if he says, you don't give taxes, taxes to Caesar, then what would happen is, then the Roman legions and the officials who are there would arrest him for treason. But if he went on and said, go ahead and give taxes to Caesar, then the Jews and the zealots who are, the, who are there would also be annoyed with him and say that he is a co-conspirator with the Roman uh, government. But Jesus listened to the question and he recognized that they were trying to trap him. And he asked them for a coin and they gave him a coin. And he asked them, what image and what inscription is on this coin? And they responded to him, 
it is Caesar's image and Caesar's inscription. And he goes on to tell them, then render to Caesar or give to Caesar that which belongs to Caesar, but also unto God, give to God that which belongs to God. He displayed his wisdom in that context because the image that was on that coin was Caesar's coin. And so he says, give that coin to Caesar. But the image that you and I are made in is the image of God. So Jesus was actually saying, give Caesar the coin that he wants, but give yourself to God. Be wise as you seek to share the gospel. The second thing that Jesus told them to do is to be harmless. To be harmless. This is drawn from that same verse 16 towards the end where he says, be as innocent as doves. The New King James Version renders it like this, be as harmless as doves. Now, notice that Jesus connects these two metaphors into one sentence, implying that these two metaphors, they go hand in hand, so that he tells them, be as wise as serpents and as, harm as harmless as doves. In other words, when it comes to your thought processes with regard to evangelizing in those discomforting situations, think like a snake. But when it comes to your behavior, act like a dove. The dove symbolizes gentleness and purity. In the scripture, the Holy Spirit is anthropomorphized as a dove. Doves were one of the birds that were acceptable as sacrifices according to the Old Testament law. So that as we go about ministry, as we go about evangelizing in the midst of confrontation and hostility, we are to exhibit gentleness and purity in doctrine. Think like a snake, but act like a dove. The third thing Jesus tells them to do is captured in verse 17. He says, be on your guard against people, for they will hand you over to the courts and flog you in their synagogues. The New English Translation puts it like this. Be, beware of people because they will hand you over to the councils and flog you in their synagogues. And so what he was telling them is this. Beware as you go into that quote-unquote enemy territory, as you go in amongst the wolves, as you go in amongst those who may be hostile to attack you, beware. Beware because it is people who will hand you over. You see, the Bible tells us that wickedness dwells in the heart of man. So you and I, as we go about in that hostile territory, in those discomforting situations as we're seeking to evangelize, we are to be watchful. We are to be awake. We are to be alert. We are to be perceptive. We are to be keen to recognize that the, to recognize the people or the persons whom we are evangelizing because it is those very people who may turn out to be your attackers and they will attack you using either the religious system or the political or legal regime that you are under. Sometimes the attack may even come from family as we have seen. And so when you are alive and alert to the context in which you are evangelizing and you are aware of the persons that operate therein, it informs your, your prayers, it informs your approach towards evangelism, it gets your mind and heart ready and steady to engage in the work of evangelism. Beware, Jesus says. The next thing that Jesus tells them is captured in verse 19. Verse 19 says this, But when they hand you over, do not worry about what you are to say. For what you say, sorry, for what you are to say will be given you in that hour. And so what Jesus was telling his disciples was this, in the midst of hostility, in the midst of trouble, be calm. He was telling them to be calm. Why? Because God will guide you. Because God will help you. 
because God will cause you to speak words that are appropriate at that time. You see, in this very narrative, three times Jesus tells his disciples not to fear. He tells them not to fear. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 26, this is what he tells them. So do not fear them, for there is nothing concealed that will not be revealed or hidden that will not be known. Jesus was telling them that I know all things and God knows all things. So you need not fear as you seek to engage in the work that he, he was calling them to engage in. So that even you and I, in those discomforting situations, whereas we are to be wise and we are to be harmless and we are to be where, we are not to be fearful. We are to be calm in those situations. Matthew chapter 10, verse 28, again, he tells them, And do not be afraid of those who kill the body and are unable to kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. And so Jesus was telling them, Life and death is in my hands. Even as I send you amongst the wolves, do not fear. I'm the author and the holder of your life. In verse 31 of that same chapter, Matthew chapter 10, he tells them, so do not fear, you are more valuable than a great number of sparrows. And so Jesus assures and comforts them, telling them, I care for you and I care for you more than anything else. You need not fear. You need not fear. The fifth thing that Jesus tells his disciples as he commissions and engages them, preparing them to, to go out in mission and evangelism, is captured in verse 22. This is what the verse says. And you will be hated by all because of my name, but it is the one who has endured to the end who will be saved. So he was telling them, remain faithful to God, even in the midst of hostility, in the midst of discomfort, in the midst of those challenges, in the midst of the attack, even in persecution, remain faithful to God. And he gives them this promise. The one who endures to the end will be saved. So that he tells them, as you go through, there is a reward at the end. So my brother, my sister, go ahead, carry out the work of God and carry it out even when you face opposition and challenge even when you're faced by those discomforting situations, go ahead knowing that God has promised a reward for you even as you go through to the very end. Finally, this is what Jesus tells the disciples with regard to those discomforting situations, with regard to the hostility that they may face or that you and I may face as we engage in evangelism in those discomforting times. Verse 23, he tells them, whenever they persecute you in one city, flee to the next. For truly I say to you, you will not finish going through the cities of Israel until the Son of Man comes. In other words, he was telling them this, be on the move. Always be on the move. You may get to one place and you find hostility and you share the message there, but don't remain there forever. Once you've shared that message, move on to the next place. There's a lot of work to be done. There are many people to be evangelized. Move from place to place as you go and as you carry the work of the ministry. And as you move from one place to the other, sometimes that move will stop you from facing that hostility after you have evangelized and shared that message. Beloved of God, we live in a fallen and hostile world. Sometimes God will call us to engage in that ministry in the midst of those uncomforting and discomforting situations, facing attacks, facing persecution, facing hostility. But these should neither discourage nor should they dissuade us. On the contrary, remember this, God has empowered you. God has commissioned you and the Lord has counseled you and I on how we are to respond and engage in carrying out evangelism and mission even in the midst 
of hostility in this dying world. We are to be wise. We are to be gentle. We are to beware. We are to be calm. We are to be steadfast. But we are also to ensure that we move from place to place. Allow me to pray for you as I bring this message to an end at this point. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we stand before your presence, Lord God, this day, acknowledging, mighty Father, that we live in some troubling times and that many, Lord God, are surrounded by some hostile situations, mighty Father. I pray in the name of Jesus that, Lord God, we will remember, Lord Jesus, that you are the one who has empowered and equipped us for the work that you have entrusted and commissioned to us, Lord God, the work of evangelizing, Lord, in the midst of any and every situation, mighty Father. And we thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, that as you equip us, Lord God, that which you give to us is sufficient for all situations, mighty Father. I thank you, Lord God, that Father, you have continued and you continue to give us our, your counsel with regard to how we may engage. You call us, mighty Father, to be wise. And I pray, Lord God, that we will be sensitive, Lord God, and wise as we engage, particularly in those discomforting situations, Lord Jesus Christ, that we will be yielded to you, Holy Spirit, and used of you, even in the midst of some difficult situations, in the midst of trial, in the midst of hardship and hostility. Father, you call us also to be gentle. And indeed, help us, Lord God, Father, to display that gentle spirit, mighty Father, to be pure in doctrine, but Father, with our behavior, Lord God, also to be gentle, Lord God, that our behavior, Lord, would attract many and would be acceptable by many. You call us, mighty Father, as we engage, mighty Father, on top of being wise and also of being gentle, Lord God, you call us, mighty Father, even Lord, just to be careful, Lord God, and to be calm, mighty Father, so that we need not be anxious and worried, even in the midst of trouble, because Jehovah God, you by your Spirit, Lord God, are able to let us know, Lord Jesus, the things that we are to say, Lord Jesus. Father, even in those difficult situations, you call us, mighty Father, to beware, to be alert. And Father, maybe we be aware and alert of situations, of people, of laws, of systems around and about us, Lord God, that would want to work towards attacking us and bringing hostility towards us, mighty Father. And so help us, Lord, that our prayers and our actions may be informed as we are aware of our context, mighty Father. Lord, you call us, Lord God, to be steadfast. Father, even in the midst of persecution, in the midst of trial. But you tell us this, Lord God, with a promise that, Father, as we endure that hostility, as we endure that hardship, Lord, there is a reward for us. Father, may you help us, Lord God, to fix our eyes on Jesus and even on the promise of his reward as we engage, mighty Father, in those difficult situations, Lord, of evangelizing. But you also call us, Lord God, to keep on moving from place to place, not to remain at one place, Lord Jesus, but to carry the gospel message from place to place, Lord God, sharing the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Father, I want to pray, Lord God, for those, Father, who are in situations of difficulty, situations of persecution, Father, I pray that you will uplift and encourage their spirits, that you will give them, Lord God, all that they need, Father, that they may be wise, that they may be gentle, that they may be aware, that they, mighty Father, Lord God, may be steadfast in the midst of hardship. But Father, grant the grace, even Lord, to continue to carry out, Lord God, the evangelism that you call us, Lord, to do. Blessed be your precious and your holy name. But Father, Lord God, May we remain faithful to you in carrying out the work of the ministry. Blessed be your name. And so, mighty Father, be with us as we proceed. We honor you and we bless you. We ask all this with thanksgiving in that precious and holy name of Christ Jesus, our Savior, 
our Lord and our God. And you can say with me, Amen. Amen. What an honor it has been just to share the Word of God with you. I want to invite you just to connect with me this coming Tuesday. You can send in your questions. We'll be taking time just to talk about this matter a bit more. It's going to be a great time. God bless you and God be with you. Amen. Thank you. I know you have been blessed by that message this morning as brought to us by Reverend Ken Isige. I know there are so many things that you will be taking away, but I want you to share on the comment section what your takeaway point is this day as you heard that message. And we appreciate Reverend Isige for sharing that message with us. May God bless you and may he enlarge you in a big way. And I also want you to share this message with your friends, those who are not able to tune in today, share the link with them so that they can be able to tune in and listen to the same message this, uh, uh, this coming week or even later uh, in the month because it was such a powerful uh, message. And also we are looking forward to seeing you again during the week. Note, on Tuesday, make sure you are joining us on Hope FM, Hope TV, Sitam Church Online on Facebook and also YouTube channels at 5 p.m. for the After Sunday live discussion where any questions you have about the subject of the sermon today will be addressed by Reverend Isige. And on Wednesday, Join us again when we invite you to join us for our midweek prayer service. This will be happening at 6 p.m. live on Hope FM, Hope TV, and all our Sitam Church online social media platforms. Our pastors will be praying for your requests, so please send them in early. Please also keep tweeting, keep posting, share your feedback on today's message, and remember to use the hashtag evangelize anyway. If you had made a decision, to follow Jesus Christ as your Savior today, please let us know by contacting the following WhatsApp number that is 0728-221221 on your screen. We will be sure to follow up with you this week. I now want to invite Reverend Kwame Rubadiri to give us the closing benediction. Thank you so much, Gigi. It was such a delight to have you as our moderator Thank today. You. Thank you. Such an honor to be here. We certainly look forward to having you come back again. Looking forward. And if you enjoyed uh, Gigi's moderation, just put some digital hand clap there in the chat space, etc. We really appreciate you. Thank God you. bless you. And thank you so much for joining us today. We have been truly blessed by the ministry of the word from our good friend and the DFA here at CITAM, the Reverend Kent Isige. Please do join us uh, throughout the week. As George has already mentioned, you can join us on Tuesday and Wednesday and also let others know what God is doing in your life as a result of this time of just evangelizing. And those of you who have been encouraged to give your lives to the Lord Jesus Christ or just to go out and tell someone else, let us know and we can certainly pray for you. We have resources that we'd like to give and put into your hands as well so that you can go out and tell others how they can come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Please join us now as we share in a short time of uh, benediction. If you're in a position to stand, if you're in a position to join us on your feet, please do so as we share the words of the grace. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen.